Hello and welcome back to the WCS European Challenger Playoffs. We're here joining into the next series. My name is Fear Dragon. I am joined here by Cats, looking spiffy as ever. And uh, oh, thank you. we got a Protoss versus Terran coming up next. How are you feeling about this one? It should be pretty good. Uh, I talked to Hearthstone a little bit. This is going to be Hearthstone versus Hero Marine, for those of you not aware. And uh, I talked to Hearthstone a little bit. He feels like he's uh, well prepared for this. He feels like there's a lot of material Mm -hmm. out from Hero Marine in recent history. You talked, we were talking before the game, you were mentioning uh, his series against Trap in GSL versus the World. He also played some PBT a couple of weeks ago in Challenger, I believe. So Hearthstone has had a lot to study from and he looked really strong in his group, so. Yeah. Hearthstone being able to come out 4-0 uh, in his group, I mean, not really even dropping any maps or anything, is definitely gonna be looking to be in good form. Hero Marine, I think, has a bit more of that name recognition these days as oh, being yeah. one of those top players. So traditionally, if you just said, oh, look at the two names, look at their clout these days, Hero Marine kind of has it. But like you said, it's just the fact that Hearthstone seems to be playing really well. And Hero Marine, showing a lot of his gameplay. He has, he's been traveling. He just probably got back from uh, GSL versus the world. I talked to Hero Marine a little bit, and he said he's gotten, feels like he's in better form than he was at GSL versus the world. Okay. But we're going to have to wait and see if that actually is the truth. Yeah, that's very interesting indeed. So both players seem to be confident heading into this. Now, Harstem is a uh, a player that I think thrives on streaks, where he kind of yeah. just like, you know, goes off and destroys everyone and then That's you know, why he, it's off. the year of Harstem, not the like week of Harstem. It should be the week of Harstem or, or like the, the month of Harstem. <laughs> the month of Harstem we'll month. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Which, we'll what see month would be Harstem month? This month. This month? Okay, so it's just like all all of August? August. Is there a is there a month? That, uh, let's let's opportunity for a pun here, but I don't see it. So maybe you would. There's um. Is there a month with lips, of some sort? You know what? We're we're not gonna try <laughs> and make too much of this a har har pun joke, but uh, oh. instead we're gonna jump in and introduce our first player, whose name begins with a har. So he's quite a funny guy. It's a red Protoss player, <laughs> Harstum. And on the. Uh, top left hand side, it is Hero Marine. Now, Hero Marine is also a very, I don't know if to call him an emotional player, but he is a, <laughs> a guilty player for sure. Yes. So uh, we'll see. I think that I think that if Harstam can get some momentum going his way, like win the first or or second game of the series, um, that'll be really really good for him. So so I yeah. expect. If Hearthstone is able to take one of those games, I think this this could be his series. I'm totally with you there. And I think that also, it's it's one of those funny things that you notice with StarCraft players where sometimes confidence, and I mean, you always hear it talked about, right, where confidence can be good, mm -hmm. but there are oftentimes also situations where if you are confident moving into things and things just start not going well, it's almost like that confidence ends up backfiring, right? It certainly can, yes. So, so I know uh, I know Hugh Marine was talking about, he actually said, he feels like he has a 70% chance oh, against wow. which is a pretty, it's really high for StarCraft. Yeah, very, very high. And, and Harstam also was feeling confident against Hero Marine in particular. So, I mean, he didn't give me a percentage-based confidence, but but I think that he believes that he should be able to win this or, or that he will. Yeah. So this should be a very interesting series. Um, fun fact, I played Hero Marine like two days ago, proxy hatched him. I uh, think I had a lead, but I lost anyway. Just destroyed, got destroyed <laughs> because, you know, he just showed up with a lot more stuff than I <laughs> thought he could show up with, and I died. But then my stream chat, they told me that uh, that he was raging, and if he played against me again, <laughs> that he would just leave right away. And that's what I'm talking about. That's yeah. the kind of mentality that Hero Marine, I think, subscribes to, where, where if something bothers him enough, he can just crumble. And I yeah. think Karstam is the kind of player that can be very bothersome, very... He w will have studied Hero Marines, uh, and I think he could he could exploit his weaknesses. Harsum is the kind of player that you'll look at it and you're like, this is almost standard, but it's got the Harsum twist on it, yeah. right? So I, I think that that's exactly what you're saying. That kind of extra time and all of that uh, those extra games he's been able to witness that Hero Marine has played of TVP lately. Mm -hmm. Harsum is the player who will come up with the right little tweaks to try and adjust to Hero Marine. Yeah, or even like you're saying, even if he plays kind of standard, he will still pick the right builds yeah. for his opponent. Um, now, uh, Lambo, if he's watching, he was like, yeah, Katz, Karsten is the player that, that uh, <laughs> picks builds uh, like, like no one else does, you know? Like, that's not what I'm <laughs> saying. I'm saying Karsten is definitely very good at it, and he definitely does his, uh, his, his studying here. 
Well, so far we do have a Robo started up there for Harsim. He's trying to deny that Reaper Scout, has that Stalker out, has the Adept out. Is going to be able to shade onto the Adept. I think he's going to start regenerating some hit points, so will be able to survive a single attack from that Adept. I think it yeah. will barely. It's going to be able to get out of there alive, but still no scouting information for Hero Marine. Yes, indeed. An Observer moving out onto the map now from Harstam, and he's making multiple of those, perhaps expecting the Widow Mine. So uh, he is, like we were saying, well prepared here. Yeah, uh, the multiple yeah, the multiple Observers is definitely going to give him some really, really good heads up of any drops that come in or if there is that Widow Mine drop. But we do see a Robotic Ooh. Space started up behind this. Probably going to be moving to those Colossus, I imagine. Most likely. It is very early, um, but I'm not too familiar with the matchup. Do you think he'll just start producing Colossus right away, or is there any chance that we see like a Disruptor drop opening or something? I think, so, the, the big thing that I notice is if you go for the Disruptor drop, you would have already started the Warp Prism, I think, or right around the time the Robotics play gets thrown down. Right. But because he's gone for not only two Observers beforehand, which means like you don't really have a lot of firepower to survive mm -hmm. if there was like an attack, but like the third observer, I'm like, you know, yeah. this is probably Colossus. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. So we should start seeing Colossus production as that next uh, building finishes. And it does. Forge being added as well. I do also want to, yeah, the, for Hero Marine, you were talking about this, the Widowmine drop. It is going to be with that Widowmine drop. And you're talking about how Harsum is oftentimes pretty good at picking out those builds. Well, mm -hmm. it does seem like getting all those observers is uh, probably going to pay off a little bit uh, better, as he yeah. should have an easy time seeing this drop coming in. He has the vision. Is he going to be in position? And there are the Stalkers. Yes, he is. Almost. Yeah, almost in position. Might be able to kill one of the Widow. Oh, he's not moving the probes. Got to be really careful there. Okay. Oh, oh the very the nice focus firing. Yeah, the, the gateway robo wall kind of worked a little bit against him because the stalkers came in to ambush the medevac and the medevac just is like, okay, well I can fly over this and you you can't, so yeah. guess I get in there safely. Yeah, absolutely. So Hearthstone could have maybe repositioned a little bit earlier. Maybe he could have had the observer out a little bit further out so that so that he has a little bit more of a heads up. But uh, absolutely, his, his wall does end up uh, biting him and there's the first Colossus. Yeah, so the big thing there is that, yes, three workers going down is not that much, but losing the sentry can be really annoying for Hurston because yeah. he has the observers. We talked about how many observers he has, but Hero Marine is definitely one of those top-notch players who can oftentimes notice the observers. He'll look and scan for them. He actually just scans and picks off one of them right there. Yeah. So that means that you don't have the sentry anymore. You don't have the hallucination energy. Mm -hmm. You have to rely on observers to scout or adepts, and it's, it's going to be more costly. Yeah, most definitely. Now, Hero Marine will continue to drop in spite of uh, Hearthstone's awareness, but he has a very sizable force right now, and I think he's mm -hmm. looking to push the issue on two fronts. This is not going to be easy to hold for Hearthstone. Yeah, Harsim sees a lot of the army moving to the center. Did the Observer spot out the Medivacs loaded? No, he, okay. lo he loaded them right after sniping them. Oh, and he has another Observer on the south side that barely misses the Medivac. So this, okay, this Observer will scout them. And this is, again, that, that big advantage that Harsim can get through those Observers. But he needs to have units in position. He's starting to reposition, but I'm not sure he's going to get into the main in time. Yeah, I mean, lucky for him, he does see both armies and the, size, the potential size of them. So mm -hmm. he should be able to spot split his army as well as he possibly can, but I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. I'm not sure that he has enough. He did drop a lot of a lot of uh, tech, and yeah, Artosis, so Marauders. Artosis Pylon is going to make it uh, even harder. Yeah, he's going to end up losing one of the Colossus oh. over here. We're seeing Stalkers warped at the same time. The attack at the third base is still continuing on. Now, that one is being held a lot better thanks to the Colossus and some good force fields. But still, at the same time, the drop is happening in the natural. You know, he hasn't actually killed too many probes here. Just despite the fact that so many probes have been pulled, I don't actually think that two workers went down. Yeah, not much went down. The probe the probe advantage lies heavily on Harstam's favor. I, I should say not heavily, just 14 workers ahead right now. Uh, Zero Marine is now situating his third. So, um, yeah, kind of evening things out here as far as the income graph is uh, concerned. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised, but it looks like it was mostly Stalkers and I guess the Colossus that went down oh, there. And very ooh. nice Force Fields. Uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of Zealots at the front, so the Stalkers end up taking the brunt of the Got Forces. To. But yeah, that almost managing to snipe off one of those Medivacs, but the Marauders keep him back. Ooh, nice snipe there. Oh. Uh, ten, ten workers, not Damn. bad. That's not bad. pretty good. 
that is pretty good. In spite of the cannon there too, you you place a cannon, you feel a lot safer against those. So you're you know you you feel like you can leave less units there. But uh, big Gabe still punishing. Yeah, still finding those opportunities. Now it is also worth noting that uh, Gabe has started up plus two weapons. Doesn't have an armor upgrade on the way. In fact, I think he does just have one engineering bay. So he's getting those single upgrades at a time, kind of similar to how Harsim has been getting them. Harsim is falling a little bit further behind in those. Yeah, I do like that Big Gabe has been uh, producing mostly the attack upgrade as there's Colossus in play. Mm -hmm. So those are gonna, you know, not care as much about armor. The higher the damage output, the less armor matters. So he's being very consistent here with that. We'll see if he's able to capitalize. Only two medevacs though, and this is, oh, there, there's the next two. Yep. Yeah, def he has been using a lot of those medevacs for that drop harassment. Every single time you oh. lose one of them, it's painful. Oh Ooh. my god, Observer Speed! Somewhere out there, Juggernaut Jason is just making vroom, vroom sounds. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the scan was a little bit preemptive he, if he had seen the Observer. I'm not sure if he was just scouting or scanning yeah. because he thought, you know, there must be an Observer around here. But he could have <laughs> definitely moved further into position before scanning. Yeah, I always wonder sometimes about like how Terran player, how they actually end up doing that. If it's like you just see it, you scan and you attack move, and then you go look somewhere else, double check that you actually got the observer later on or something. Yeah, I mean the observer dies pretty fast, so you can usually just like stare at it dying. Yeah. Uh, okay, well we do have a nice little Zelda run by. He's actually gonna be able to scout out that fourth base and delay it a little bit. But four Colossus moving on to a fifth Colossus, but the High Templar transition is starting to come out over here. You usually don't want to go beyond like five or five or even six Colossus starts getting pretty heavy on Colossus. Yeah, a lot of that is going to be because of the, the space and the overkill potential, right? So mm -hmm. uh, this is kind of a wide open map. At a, actually, it's a pretty choky map at most entrances right now. So yeah, you definitely don't want to make too many Colossus. There's a lot of Vikings in play as well. Yeah, and especially if you get off all, over all those uh, cliff faces. Now, I do want to note, there is a oh. upgrade in the production tab you might not recognize. This is the new ghost upgrade of the most recent patch, because we are on the most recent patch now. That increases the radius of EMP by 0.5. Doesn't sound like a lot. It does actually have a pretty significant impact, though. Yeah, radius is a big thing to have because, you know, it's a radius, it's not just yeah. extra radius. It adds to both sides. Indeed, to all sides. All sides, actually, yeah. Uh, so, in the meanwhile, until that upgrade finishes up, these ghosts are still going to have some nice EMP potential on Stalkers, as well as any of those High Templars, but the High Templars don't have Storm just yet. Yeah, very nice job by Harstam trying to find this opening. See, did cancel the other CC, and Finds one. very nice harassment there. Yeah, uh, there's absolutely nothing over here. It does seem like Hero Marine noticed. He pulled his SCVs around a little bit, but still ends up losing five or six of workers over here. Uh, not going to really lose a bunker. They're just three zealots, but he's scanning ahead. He's looking for opportunities to poke forward. He really wants to get some damage on, because like you said, his fourth command center did get pretty heavily delayed. Yes, indeed. Five SCVs went down in that. Ooh, he might and, actually... Uh, he might be able to cut off the fourth uh, Nexus from the army. It looks like it. The uh, Vikings in very good position here on that unpathable terrain. So it's going to be very difficult to blink under them or punish them. And that pushes the army of Harstam to where it can't do anything. Well, Harstam is continuing with these Zealot run-bys. Now he's trying to mix it in with the War Prism, but the War Prism is getting focused right down by the Marines. And he does manage to get the War Prism out of range of those. He goes for some more Zealots, takes out the Bunker. Now the SCVs have to retreat. Here is the big for fight, forced out massive EMP oh. radius over there. The Colossus are getting annihilated by the Vikings. Is there enough Protoss on the ground? Yeah, it seems like not. So Harstam is, is there. What he was doing was choosing to ignore the Vikings so that he could chase onto the army. But without four seals or anything like that, the you know Hero Marine just pushes or pulls back as far as possible so that the Vikings can uh, do as much damage to the Colossus before they reach the army. That was the right play, identifying that Harstam wanted the engagement. I would have much rather seen Harstam maybe focus fire on those Vikings. If you don't have a way to stop the army from running away, then it's just gonna run away. And then, you know, if you're not shooting the Vikings, they're gonna shoot your Colossus down. Yeah, a little tough there for Harstam because he lost that fourth base. It really, really sets him a lot further behind. Here, Marine, on the other hand, is not only finish up another command center that just had to be built a little bit further into his own base, but he's starting up a planetary fortress now, so it's going to be a lot safer against those Zealot run-bys. He's got Liberators being added on, and Harstam 
it's really the big thing here is that he does now have Storm Research, and I think he's going to start rebuilding that energy for High Templars. Yeah, Hero Marine about to finish 3-2, so an unusual side as he's going to be ahead in upgrades of the Protoss by one, and, and this might be uh, something that he looks to exploit. Yeah, uh, Harsum still only just starting up 3-3 now is going to definitely be behind on those upgrades for a little bit. We'll see if Hero Marine is going to be able to make this attack hit at the right time and force that engagement. High Templars are trailing on the back end of things, and the Ghosts are in the front end, so they go for EMPs, but they don't hit the High Templars. They hit a lot of the army, though. Yeah, and that's the power of those EMPs. It's just, you know, you're removing so much HP from the entire army that it's very oh. difficult for the Protoss player to engage. It's kind of like a Dorito cannon, right? Like, he, mm -hmm. he feels like he needs to maybe recharge some of those shields, especially being behind yeah. an army, a good 20 supply. Okay, High Templar's starting to come forward with some of the storms. Oh, a no. Colossus! Oh, man, just to survive, only really losing most of its shields there. But this is such a tough spot right now for Harsum. Even with these nice little zealot run by attempts, Liberator's covering things, and Harsum desperately needs a fourth base right now. He needs nice to push point. this back. Yeah, that was very nice of him to, to uh, poke and kill that Liberator, but again, he's trailing now 40 army supply. And that is a difficult position to be in. I'm surprised that Hero Marine is not pushing the issue, but I guess he's content with just uh, the oh! economy. Yeah, loses a lot of army supply right there, trying to uh, split up his army a bit, but that does actually bring supply counts only about 15, 20 supply away. Now, this is going to hurt Harsten, because he's trying to establish that fourth base. If Hero Marine can just push this army back, he kills the fourth, and then Harsten is back down to three bases again. Yeah, and that's kind of the good thing. Like, we see that army go down, but at the same time, Hero Marine has leverage on this side where he's saying, if your army is here, sure, you kill my little army, but I get to deny the only other potential base that you could have. So uh, so it'll end up paying off for him. And now Hearthstone feels hard-pressed to engage, and this might be the last engagement that uh, Hero Marine can clear. Hero Marine doing a fantastic job this game of just starving Hearthstone out, never letting him establish that fourth base, and continuing to poke and prod constantly. And so Hearthstone never really had that uh, breathing room. So now, like you said, he's forced into that kind of situation that he feels like he has to do something. He has to go attack. He finishes up his 3-3 upgrades. He has no signs of actually, uh, oh, maybe he's going to try and retake a fourth at this point because... He feels like he has to do something, but I don't even know if he can afford it right now. I feel like just going for the all-in at this point is maybe better. Yeah, I love this move by Hero Marine. He recognizes that Harstem is well behind in economy, so he's leveraging his own economy. He's saying the longer this game goes, the better. I don't have to defend at this base. There's no use in it. And, uh, you know, he's just going to pull back and uh, wait until he has considerably more than Harstem. Harstem still needs to make something happen here. So, so here is one thing that I do like about Harstem's situation right now, Katz, is that all of the oh. ghosts are dead, and there are no more ghosts being produced. Yeah. So those High Templars, yeah, th there's actually not that many of a, uh, it's, it's just what, six, six Vikings, yeah, five Vikings, six Vikings, two more are gonna be popping soon. There is an opportunity here for Harstem to just steamroll the army, and if you can do that and then get on top of production or some of these bases, Yes. That's how Harsten makes this work. Absolutely, yeah. He has to get on top of production because the bases are not going to be enough of a threat and he does not want to uh, apply pressure onto a planetary fortress and fight uphill there. So he really needs to siege this to where Hero Marine feels the need to engage Harsten. Yeah, I'm actually really impressed. Harsten is showing a lot of patience here in a situation I think a lot of people would feel the time pressure of, I did never establish a fourth base. The longer this game goes on, the harder it's going to get, the more army is going to have. But Harsum is really, really making sure he makes the most of this army. Yeah, I would almost like to see sentries just to block off like two force fields on the left side, mm -hmm. seeing as there's so much army there would be oh. very powerful for Harsum. But I mean, it's a difficult decision to make with how little he has right now. Yeah, some decent storms going off and the Colossus are uh, doing a nice job staying alive with the Warp Prism. Is it actually enough though? It seems like it's gonna get steamrolled regardless. Here, Marine. He's starting to run a little bit drier on units, but as the Archons and the Stalkers start getting cleaned up, the Colossus goes down. It does seem like Hero Marine holds and now sits up about 30 supply. Yeah, this is uh, almost unrecoverable for Harstem. He's a fighter. He will drop a fourth base behind this, but uh, that's not going to be enough. I'm re repositioning his fourth base is Hero Marine, so he will continue to have that economic lead. Mm -hmm. Difficult, difficult game from here. Yeah, do you feel like there's any kind of harassment or something that Har Har you would want to see Harsum do here to just pull back a little bit more? Because it seemed like he was almost starting to make it work there. Yeah, I think he might have actually been better off just pushing the issue earlier. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about patience, and yes, it was nice. He did get some pickoffs, 
but I mean, Hero Marine was producing more than him. Yeah. So, uh, so Hero Marine was happy with Harstam not attacking and, and continuing to warp in those units, I think. So that's what I would have liked to see. At this point, what I like to see something, anything in production would be a nice start. <laughs> so <laughs> two, yes. two zealots are not going to cut it. I would like to see something like Disruptors, just because they have, you know, the potential to, to kill a lot. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe you snipe off all the ghosts before they get their EMP off or something. Yeah, yeah. like something, oh. you know, a Hail Mary is what he needs. Yeah, he gets one of his High Templars immediately EMP. The second storm does end up whiffing. I think he maybe only has one at most two storms left over. And those medevacs still alive, healing up that army of Hero Marine. Hero Marine is not going to be abated anytime soon. Yeah, and look at him. He's spreading his army well, so oh, he's Lord. not taking any risks. Uh, was there the perfect Disruptor shot? It wouldn't be perfect enough. So uh, Harstam having to pull the probes now. Yeah, and when a Protoss player has to pull the probes and they're getting EMP'd, you know that things are looking pretty dire. Hero Marine playing a hell of a game number one. Man, just to take it. Goes up 1-0. Yeah, very well done indeed. Keeping mm -hmm. ahead in upgrades the entire time, just poking everywhere. Harstam was well prepared. He had the observers. He saw the Widow Mines coming. Still, they did a lot of damage, especially the second time around. Mm -hmm. Makes a cannon. Still, they do a lot of damage. So um, bleeding a little bit more than he was planning to, right? Like that's yeah. uh, a lot of investment already going into, hey, like I'm ready for you. And then it's like, well. Yeah, matter. that part was definitely unfortunate. And the, the Zealot run buys, he, it does look good because he gets a lot of these SCV kills here and there. But how many Zealots he actually invested into all that? We even saw, like if you imagine there were eight or so more Zealots in that main army fight, that maybe does actually start helping uh, help out a little bit with keeping some of the Stalkers alive, so the Stalkers are taking out more of the Vikings like you were talking about, so maybe some of the Colossus tail, like these little things do start to add up when you're trying to go for these harassment things. Yeah. I'm not saying that I don't like to see more of that Zealot harassment and everything, but it's just worth noting, he did invest a lot into it, and I don't know that he fully got the entire value he was hoping for there. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the time the, the gas units are going to be the, the main anchor and Zealots are somewhat disposable, like, yeah, uh, like yeah. Ling Rambais. I think he did good, and he did good at, at identifying how many Zealots he should send. I loved, for example, when he sent eight to kill the bunker, right? Yes. And, and he nice. would, like, have to... Uh, he stole a lot of Hero Marine. He made him push, pull back. So I really like the, the Zealot Rambais. I think that was one of the, the strongest points mm -hmm. um, of his uh, game here. Um, what I would have liked to see is the Colossus kind of pull back against the Vikings and mm -hmm. have the Stalkers pick off Vikings mm. or be ready to force field or something because the problem was the big fight where the Colossus are just running forward, not hitting anything because Mar Hero Marine is just steaming and running back while the Vikings do damage and nothing's hitting the Vikings in spite yeah. of Harstam having Stalkers. So I think that was his major, uh, major flaw in this game. Yeah, that's definitely true. The Colossus having a hard time staying alive in that first fight was really, really painful. But we're moving into game number two. This is still a best of five, so plenty of opportunities for good old Hearthstone to come back in this one. Yes, and our next map is going to be Cyber Forest. Do you like Cyber Forest? You know, I, I th I'm, I'm kind of like hot and cold about this one because I like this map when I'm cannon rushing. I know all those cannon rush locations pretty well in this one, mm -hmm. but for just like normal macro games, I feel like if you're not a player that just really heavily gets involved with like War Prism Harassment or something as a Protoss, or if you're a Terran player that isn't really drop heavy or something, this map, when your opponent starts doing it to you, I just feel like it's so easy to get caught out of position on this map. Mm -hmm. All right, so are you feeling Hero Marine then again, or? You know, I think normally if I say like, you know, you think of drop harassment and stuff, you think of the Terran player. Yeah. But Harsim has been pretty active without Warp Prism, I would say. With the Zealot run buys as well. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that this is one of those maps where uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention it for PvT, even though I think it's it's fallen out of favor a bit more, but there are those marine tank bushes. Cyber Forest was like the poster child map <laughs> for those Siege tank marine pushes, where you set up outside of that Protoss player's natural expansion on the low ground. You start setting up the bunkers and walling them in. You kill off their third if they went for it. And yeah. you just gradually kind of choke them out. This is the map I think about for it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll see. I'm not sure if Hero Marine has employed that strategy, but it is the topography of the map certainly lends itself for it. Yeah. So uh, we'll see if he's willing to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure what Harstam has prepared, but I'm sure he has something prepared. Yeah, for now, just going to be poking forward, getting some basic scouting information, confirming there is a command center coming up. And 
seen how many gases his opponent has, but it's worth noting the last game, Harsim did a pretty good job of denying the Reaper a scout on the kind of robo opening. And you're talking about, hey, we're hoping that Harsim's going to be able to pull some special, uh, specialized build for whatever Hearmarine throws out. So the more you can deny scouting information for Hearmarine just throughout this series, I think the more chances he has to try and capitalize on kind of fooling here we're in here. Yeah, I think you made a, a very solid point as well on that front though, which is that Hearthstone tends to play normal-ish, right? Like he yeah. doesn't he doesn't do crazy builds usually. Mm -hmm. It's more like he picks the right the right macro build or, or the right harassment build for for what his opponent tends to do. And Terran players in general are some of uh some of the most iterative people. I feel like like they just go for the for the same build pr or the same style pretty often. I feel like I'm not sure if Hero Marine falls into that category, but I think so. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say, I, I think when when I think of Hero Marine, I don't really think of the player who's like you know you thermal. It's like okay, he's trying to keep that air of like unpredictability. He's mixing things in here and there. Hero Marine, I think of just like raw solid macro power and mm -hmm. stuff. So I, I'm definitely with you on that. Yeah, that's what that's what I feel as well. So we'll see what he's able to accomplish here as he moves on. What's this for, Ravi? Yeah, uh, no idea. Uh, well, we got the oh the Marines moving mm -hmm. out. I think that he's trying. So I think the idea is if there's the adept scout. Mm. As we by the way, we do have a dark try and stuff coming up. But like if there's an adept the scout, shade. yeah, because normally you're trying to send the shade at the base of the ramp so you can get as far in as possible. Right. So if you try and intercept the adept before it gets that far out, right. either they don't notice in time because they're not used to encountering Marines and yeah. you lose the adept. Or you have to send out the shade earlier, and you don't really get as far as you want. That makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. uh, Ooh, Dark Shrine, though. Yeah, yeah, the Dark Shrine. So it's going to be that DT drop over here from Harstam. And remember, with this opening from Hero Marine, he doesn't get a Reaper. He went straight into Marines. He's getting up the tanks as well. Uh, I believe he got the Tech Lab already up on mm -hmm. that uh, factory. He's doing that it. push you were just talking about. Two SCVs being pulled yep. as well. I think Harstam has researched this then, because I mean, the DT really falls out of favor against the Reaper Scouts, potentially. Now, the SCVs pull back as the Adept Shade, as the Adept uh, identifies this coming, though. So the big thing here is you want to keep an eye on the energy on that natural command center. It's about to get 50 energy. Does he throw down the mule? Or is he going to save energy for the scan? Because if he throws down the mule right now, before the first DT reveals itself, he could actually just insta-lose his tanks and probably insta-lose this kind of push. Uh, yeah. Which is heavily committed. Indeed. Now, yeah, the, the first DT will get pushed back, but the War Prism is across the mm. map, so there will be DTs drop and forcing scans onto the side of Hero Marine oh. as well. But remember that two of the gateways are at the front uh, order here. Yeah, Mortal is going to be able to actually snipe off that Sea Chank. Okay, so it looks like Harsim's doing a great job holding at the front, yeah. while the DTs just absolutely run train on that natural expansion in the main base. Yeah, and eBay having, having to be started, and there's a next scan, but the War Prism should still be around, right? There's probably yeah. another DT being warped in as we speak. There he is. This is a very committed attack here from Hero Marine. This is not one of those, oh, I'll do this little pressure and I'll just casually, you know, macro up behind. No, this is an attack that you really, really have to get something done with. Hero Marine did not nice. get anything done with this. Yeah, at the same time, very good presence of mind to send that Liberator in. Oh, yeah. To shift click it forward into the main of Harstem. So, Hero Marine having both players really scrambling a very scrappy game. I'm liking this. Yeah, I'm heavily favoring right now Harstem, though. You look at the worker supply, it's 28 to 46. Harstem has a third base on the way. And Hero Marine is not actually mining half the time. He just keeps sending his workers back and forth between these bases, trying to dodge out of the DTs. Yeah, and the turrets getting canceled both in the main and the natural. So fantastic job there by Harstem. And Hero Marine will finally be able to secure his his uh, main base, but he will require another scan to clear the natural. And then within that scan, he has to start building a turret so that it finishes uh, this time around. Harstem well on top of the turret, so. Mm -hmm. Hero Marine really needs to look for that. Yeah, and Cats, think about not just the direct damage. Yeah, GG gets called, Harsim taking that second game. But think not just about like the immediate damage being done to the workers and stuff. Stim, combat shields, medevac, like all of these things are delayed, not just because Harsim is obviously doing some like damage to the economy, but Hero Marine just straight up just doesn't have the time or the opportunity to start up a lot of this stuff. So even if Hero Marine doesn't like take a little bit more extra damage there and tap, tap, tap out at that moment, I do think he was just going to be so far behind that oh, absolutely. could follow up and kill him. Yeah, uh, his natural was going to get den denied or delayed further. 
Uh, one thing that he had going for him, I guess, is that Hearthstone was actually pulling the Warp Prism. I'm not sure why. I think he could have warped in an extra DT and see if he can continue to delete the natural. But Hero Marine identifies that he's too far behind. And now there's a good chance, Ravi, that he's tilted as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know you were talking about that. Uh, that is losing to DTs. That is like the one of the most classic ways to uh, not feel so good about your StarCraft <laughs> gameplay. You would know. I would, I, as someone who makes a lot of DTs, that I do see it happen a lot. But uh, I think he still showed really, really strong play for the most part in that first game. If he can just pull it back and not really, really think too much about just that Cyber Force game. I think he can still uh, have a strong mentality. I, you think about the build again oh, he was doing. I mean, of course, yeah. It's, it's one of those builds that it's like, okay, Cyber Force, it's a strong map for that kind of tank marine push. He kind of got a little bit hard countered there, and Harsom did a good job of controlling everything. It's like, you really are not supposed to have a lot to deal with. DTs in three different locations, when you're on a two base situation, you have no engineering base. pushing. Base. You're right? trying to push. It's like, you're not expected to do very well there. Yeah, I think you're very can thin. Write there. it off a little bit. Yeah, I think that I, th I think that the build order from Harstam was perfectly chosen for this occasion. As there's no Reaper Scout, then there's the push, which you know you can stop with one DT or two. Yeah. And then if not, then it's checkmate at the other at the other on the other end, right? So yeah, just very well done by him. Yeah, there's there's always different ways you can lose in a game of StarCraft, right? There's the oh, this is like my standard build. I do this all the time. And when that gets crushed by like someone such as Cyril, you kind of lose hope. You're like, well, that was my bread and butter, and <laughs> I got demolished. So right. what do I? Where do I go from here? That last game, that's like a. I'm gonna throw this out there. This is a good map for it. Nope, didn't work. Okay, let's move on. So I'm hoping that that's the mentality here. Marine has. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it has to. He has to have some of that to be as consistent of a player as he is. Right? Like he has yeah. to be able to recover. Mm -hmm. Then again, Harstam is a tricky player, a player that has studied him, and we'll see if he can do something. Also one of my favorite people in the entire scene. <laughs> yeah, very, very fun guy. Um, kind of interesting pylon placement over here, because I'm used to either seeing pylons in one of two places. It's either over by the ramp just kind of, I mean, I think that one's a little bit more rare, but occasionally maybe it's he like... he wants to block the Reaper, yeah? Uh, maybe with a Cyber Core? Yeah, I, I'm, I guess I'm used to seeing... Because I think you can wall that off with a single pylon. Maybe I'm going crazy. No, I think I think you need a fatter building. Oh, you I'm need not, a gateway? I'm not 100%. Okay. I'm not a Protoss, but I, th I think you need a... I think you will probably drop the, a Cyber Core or a gateway there. That's or fair. is the Cyber Core enough? I'm not sure. You know, I really did think it was just a single pylon. Really? But, Maybe you know, I am, I'm also a cannon rusher, so if they made a <laughs> Reaper versus me, they probably already lost. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So... Uh, all right, either way, he's going to be, of course, getting up the rest of his stuff, and uh, Pylon is in position to help build a gateway or something there if he needs it, but for now, not going to worry too much about it. Sends that probe across the map, gets some basic scouting information, and I want to note, game number one, I talked about this, Harstam denies the Reaper scout. Game number two, Hyrmarine doesn't go for any scout because he's going for that big pressure mm -hmm. play and just completely skips the Reaper. Game three, he goes to the Reaper scout. I think if he does not get a good scout with this Reaper. And this goes, of course, this, we know it's going to go to a game four because it's tied one to one. I think that that is where I think Hero Marine will start feeling a bit of frustration, right? Because a Terran player in this day and age, if you've been following Twitter, Paulo, mm -hmm. scouting is one of the main <laughs> complaints that Terran players have had versus Protoss lately. Yeah, especially on the new maps. There yeah. is the Reaper path here, but it is being blocked by that Cyber Core now. So the Cyber Core is indeed enough. As we will trust, uh, Harstam knows better here. Yep. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and this probe is looking pretty fishy. Oh, uh, the Reaper is not going to be able to uh, catch it for now. The probe's starting to make its way further up north, though. Uh, maybe just looking for a second scout. As yeah, a robot yeah. is being placed at the main, so I'm not sure that this is going to be too, uh, too fishy. Too indeed. cheeky or yeah. anything, yeah. Yep. Just the Robo for now, like you said. And it's going to be a Depth Stalker as well. So the Reaper, having spent so much time looking around uh, the map, and is still actually looking around, not really bothering to get a scout. So it seems like Hero Marine's answer here is just saying, I don't really care what you're doing. I'm just going to do standard tried and true. And by taking a really fast third CC, I'm going to overpower you. Yes, indeed. And I mean, I think that is his bread and butter. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if he's able to do just that. The perfume that I'm wearing today, by the way, Ravi, was a gift from Harstam. Really? What? Do you know what it's called? Yeah, it's a Calvin Klein Man. 
Calvin Klein is just called Man. Man is the name of the perfume. M A N. M A N. Man. Yeah. I guess that is the manliest perfume you could <laughs> possibly think of. I guess. Yeah. He, there's um. A is lot it a of people perfume or a cologne? Yeah, uh, perfume. A, lo a lot of people visit me over the years. Very few bring gifts. Harstam is one of them. Har Harstam is such a little sweetheart. Yeah. Harstam and the Koreans bring gifts. Aww. Uh, really quick note of the Hellions, of course, trying to get the run by swinging over there. The Reaper joins the fray because they try and grenade the Stalker out of position. But Harstam is doing what a good Protoss player does these days, and he just kind of rebuilds a pylon behind that wall, making sure that you can't really sneak those Hellions in and get any scouting information or damage done. So, units get pushed back, and uh, so far, Hero Marine, he's buying a little, himself a little bit of space, but that War yeah, Prism, Prism is ready. Cool, by Wait the way, a second, how many gateways just finished? Uh, okay, just Whoa. just two, just two. So that this? is the coolest looking War Prism. Can't even hate it. That is uh, the new one available through yeah. the War Chest. If you guys are Very interested, nice. go pick it up. Uh, hey, Cats, I'm a little worried for Hero Marine right now. Yes, you should be, Ravi. This is pretty uh, scary, and oh with boy. the War Prism as well, he can easily micro against both the Cyclone and the Mine. The Widowmine so. already got picked off, actually. So now it's just the Cyclone oh, to worry about. Snoopy. Uh, okay, Stalkers doing their best to stay alive. The Hellion and the Reaper who rejoin the Natural while they find an opportunity to. But this is really, really scary. Remember, he has a third CC behind this really quickly. But losing the Cyclone, losing the Hellions over here, he might just die. He might not have time to use that third CC. Yeah, I mean, this is just about the perfect strategy for Hearthstone to choose once again. As you know, there is Cyclones. They don't do much against the War Prism. There's Widow Mines. They don't do much against the War Prism. Now the tanks are going to help help considerably here as he finally manages to siege one onto the low ground. Ooh, four zealots being warped. I actually really like this, considering how many SCVs ah, keep he, getting pulled. He puts one in front. Beautiful. Oh. So tanking all the shots with one hero marine. Very good at focus firing here on the stalkers, though. Yeah, making sure that it's not the zealots that take that sh uh, those sh early shots. The SCV is going up against the zealots. is not going to be a fun fight. So they end up retreating on out of there. The natural expansion is going to be lifted off. Harstam adding on a Robo Bay, adding on a Twilight Council, adding on a Forge. He's getting ready for the transition. He's remaking some of the, or just making some more workers over here. And he has made this attack so successful off of just three gateways. Yes, absolutely. Just, uh, again, a perfectly chosen strategy by Harstam, who's going to continue to poke and delay, delay the natural base of Hero Marine as he drops his third. So but I love what splits. you said there, because he's, he's being very greedy behind this as far as, uh, as his transitioning. God, I have to say, it's not very often that you get to hear the phrase or the, the term splits around Protoss players, mm -hmm. but Harstam doing a fantastic job splitting up all of his stalkers so that none of them were taking splash damage from the Siege Shank shots there. Yeah, making work with very little here. Okay, so where do we leave off from here, uh, Cats? Because we do have a 3CC build from Hero Marine, and 3CC is sort of that magical thing that Terran players always like to talk about, how it can make comebacks happen and make dreams come uh, become a reality. But is this one of those situations, do you think? I don't think so. I think this is an excellent position for Hearthstone to be in because he's he's done a great job. He also shows the potential for the War Prism to poke back in. So Hero Marine has got to be pretty hesitant to move out. He has two tanks that he probably feels like should be sieged. And he doesn't really know what the transition for Hearthstone is, if there is one at all, right? Hearthstone could have just as easily added a bunch of gateways and tried to go for an attack. And I think that Hero Marine was accounting for that. So I think that this transition is fantastic for Hearthstone and he's going to be, you know, able to get away with all of it. Yeah. That three gateway attack, by the way, with a War Prism and just the Stalkers, I have to say, that's not exactly like a, an incredibly normalized sort of thing. I mean, maybe you see it here and there, but I think that is one of those sort of Harsim specials where he says, hey, Hero Marine likes to go for these kind of 3cc builds. This is how I'm going to punish him. And you were talking about this so often in the previous uh, games. Harsim is so good at picking out these builds. Yeah, really. I mean, the main, the, the key factor for me was the unit choices from Hero Marine on this particular map. They just didn't lend themselves to deal with Stalkers and the War Prism in particular. Yeah. Uh, we saw the same exact thing happen with the DTs mm -hmm. and even with the Observers on game one. Yeah. Right? Like, he's been ready for everything. It's just like the game one was a little bit of a. Of uh, I would I don't want to say bad luck, but just mm -hmm. Gabe being better than Hearthstone could prepare for, I guess. <laughs> but the last two games, they've been they've been going pretty well for Mr. Lips. Yeah, Big Gabe had three Protoss players in his group stage. Then he had to play a Protoss player GSL versus the world. Mm -hmm. He's been busy traveling around, be living the programmer yeah. life. Kevin DeConing, good old Hearthstone, just sitting at home and saying, "I'm watching everything. <laughs> I see everything." Yep. 
Yes, came prepared. Indeed. He did his homework today. He sure did. And I thought if he won one of those two games, that this favored him in terms of mentality as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, so I'm looking for Hearthstone to take this serious now at this point. It is 1-1, but he certainly has an edge here mm -hmm. in spite of the supplies being very close. Yeah, the supplies, of course, do eventually even up, but that is partially because Hearthstone stopped that worker production. He's adding on his big gateway flood, and he's getting the finalized upgrades here for probably what's going to be a really, really big push with those Colossus. At least that's, I have to imagine that's where it's going to lead into. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I always like to say StarCraft is played mainly on three fronts, and the tech front is where Hearthstone has taken most of his advantages to try to capitalize on. So he added all those, you know, all those upgrades. He's probably waiting for them to Whoa. begin. He has Charge, he has Blink, uh. he has a Templar. Oh, Whoa, nasty. where do those Stalkers come oh, from? Oh, this is great. Yeah, gets two of the Medivacs, but half of that third, or that, uh, second medevac does unload so he's getting some damage done over here shield battery finishes up and keeps that cannon alive a little bit longer target down the uh, the pylons is kind of okay but yeah he does end up getting the robo and this is getting some decent damage done but he lost a lot oh. of army in the process and hearts them anticipating also that hero marine would try for a retreat so yeah he does kill the robo like you said but i don't think that's enough and there's already yeah. three colossus out so uh, Hearthstone might just be content not to remake it and just lean heavier on his push. Yep. And now all the upgrades are finishing up here for Hearthstone. Maybe he's going to wait around for plus two weapons before really making the full push out here. But yeah, take that fourth base, leave like two stalkers on either side of that one remaining medevac, mm -hmm. and he should be good to go for a big attack. Yeah, he's remaking the row, but it, it will not come into play for this particular attack. I think it's just insurance should this fail. I don't think it will, though. <laughs> uh, 14 extra army supply for Harstem. And uh, this is going to be a difficult hold on Hero Marine's third. War Prism also heading into the main base during all this. He's going to try and split up Hero Marine a little bit. But it is worth noting that he is not going to have reinforcements for this fight then. Because it's not only the Robo that's not reinforcing. Yeah, the War Prism does get taken down. But Harstem also identifies that there's some army here. He will not look to capitalize, however, as there is not just tanks, but also the CC blocking a lot of the pathing onto uh, Hero Marine's next uh, fortified position, I suppose. Yeah. And because of that War Prism got taken out in the main base and he didn't have the army, he wasn't going to have any reinforcements. So I, I do think that pulling back was maybe a, a little bit of wiser of a decision. So I do like that. Just he could have possibly made that work and he could have possibly won right there. Mm -hmm. But why take the risk? Yeah, I mean, at, at this point, it's getting a little bit closer. If Hero Marine pushes that back, he did make that fourth CC that Harstam is now aware of. Mm -hmm. So uh, so this is getting a little bit worrisome. Should, should Harstam not accomplish anything here? I'm not saying it was an easy push to make either, uh, but there were, you know, there were some units there. Mm -hmm. That CC, though, it's so scary to, to, mm -hmm. to you know, push into tanks when there's so much of a blockage in front. Yeah. Well, the fourth orbital, they're not going for the planetary fortress like he opted to go for in the first game. So here, Marine feels like that fourth base is maybe a more defendable defendable position or something. It is a very wide open area, though, and it seems like Arsim's already moving toward that location. Here, Marine has his units in position. Looks like the Archons and the Stalker is going to be leading the charge. The Zell is coming in from the back, and there are those storms before that ghost upgrade finishes. There are a few ghosts that get some EMPs off. I don't know if Harstam has enough to continue pushing in uh, here, though. That storm was a little bit of a waste there by Harstam. And, and luckily for him, he doesn't have any remaining, so that's going to be the end of his attack for now, at least until he regathers some energy. I think he could have pushed the issue. I think he could have uh, at least forced a lift off, maybe killed a bunch of SCVs there. But that storm, that last storm, was a little bit too, too, uh, too hasty. If he had another storm behind it, I'm fine with it. But because it was his last, mm -hmm. uh, it made it so that Hero Marine could just retreat and then, you know, retake this positioning. Yeah, I really like that he's finally adding in that second Robo because I think the other thing was not having a War Prism during that fight meant the slower reinforcements. Mm -hmm. Maybe that could have turned the tide yeah. of allowing him to finally push in there. But like you were saying, he got close but not quite. Now there's bunker set up over here. A really smart decision from here, Marine. Yeah, I think this is a great play from him. And... Um yeah, like he was out of Storm, but also Hero Marine was out of EMPs. Maybe Karsten thought maybe there's another Ghost or something like that. I really I really wish he hadn't used that Storm on the third base, however, of Hero Marine. There's a little bit of a run by going on right now, I believe. Getting some nice damage done. Picking off a few SCVs, but also forcing a lot of the army to this location while the War Prison tries to run to the main. Getting caught by the Missile Turret and also some Vikings. Not going to happen, though. Hero Marine is much more prepared this game.
Yeah, certainly. Harstam trying to find a different angle as he identified that there was two missile turrets at the north. <laughs> so he thinks he's just gonna have to deal with the one um, down south, but then the Vikings in great position from Hero Marine. Ooh, looking for the snipe on those High Templars. I yeah. bushes that one. <laughs> uh, gets a feedback on one of the ghosts before the High Templar ends up going down. I think there are still a decent number of those ghosts with the EMPs still left over. And Hero Marine is finally going to be the one that's getting on the offensive. He's looking for an opportunity to snipe off that maybe that third base on the north side. Then maybe uh, if he doesn't find that opportunity, he'll go toward the fourth base. But Harsim must keep an eye on that army. Yeah, and this is getting pretty scary. Nice sellout Rambais once again. But Hero Marine's reinforcements are likely in position to deal with it for the most part. Now, there's so many ghosts, and I do love the, the idea of the disruptors here from Harsim. As ghosts kind of stim and, you know, run away very easily. Yeah, this really, really does become, for both of these players, a very difficult army to control. Harsim is going to be trying to control disruptors, using his Colossus effectively against those Vikings. So he has to use the Stalkers to try and target down the Vikings. And he's going to be trying to control High Templars and Storm. Hero Marine is also going to have his hands full with all the different splash damage units, so lobbing things at him. This is really, I think, going to come down to a game of control with this army. Oh. And Harstam was really looking for those ghosts Whoop. there. See, like the second storm, they're completely unnecessary. Yeah, a little bit of a whiff, but uh, it's scary, right? With this much mm -hmm. EMP around, you kind of want to keep your energy down, I guess. Ooh, nice revelation. He does scary. trade the Oracle for it, but this is really going to help out in making sure he doesn't just take a bad fight in the uh, early stages of this next little couple of minutes. Yeah, big stim from Big Gabe, Ooh. and uh, that Disruptor a little bit hopeful. He's trying to nice down the robo. Oh my god, those DTs! There's DTs on the south side! There's three or four of them with plus three very, weapons! Very, nice. They are massacring this Bioforce, and Hero Marine just doesn't seem to notice until now! Yeah, I mean, it, it was a difficult thing to notice, and he he had to feel like he's in control. And like you said, there's so much going on, there's so much to control for both players. And Hearthstone uh, warping in those DTs in the back, right? Likely mm -hmm. where Hero Marine's screen isn't even looking like it like you know you only have so much screen and a lot of the time you want to look forward and position your screen forward because that's where the units are going to be coming from so very well done by Harstam there mm -hmm. now he's going to be able to morph a lot of those dts into archons expecting that there's going to be scans and uh, missile turrets for this next attack but Harstam is also taking that top right hand base humory is looking to try and establish a new one himself but this is where the liberator production has really gone ham behind everything mm. six or five liberators being produced at a time i mean one more round of those liberators is going to have a total of 10 and that is more than enough to really really set the fear into a protoss yeah a lot of robos have been added for Harstam at this point so i'm curious to see what he's going to be producing from those two more at the front one at the natural so a total of three i believe yeah, kind of interesting. We do have the Stargate done, and we, of course we saw that Oracle earlier on, but no Fleet Beacon or anything, which is usually, if you are expecting that uh, Liberator transition soon, you are going to start adding on that Fleet Beacon for the Tempest. But maybe Harstam has different plans to end the game earlier or deal with those Tempests in a different way. He's not really using those Robos for anything, so I'm confused as to uh. why he added them. Oh, wow, nice pickups by Hero Marine here as he yeah. identifies them with a scan. And Harstam leaving a few units a little bit care carelessly there. Yeah, I, th I think the extra Robos may have just been because he, one of his Robos got sniped. Mm -hmm. And maybe he lost track of his other Robo or something, but he was just saying, okay, I want to have the Robos ready so I can make the three Colossus at a time. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Looking to uh, to replace him, perhaps. But I, yeah. I mean, I, I don't like to see Tech still oh. sitting idly, but I guess yeah. we're going to a stage in the game where potential tech switches are going to be important as well. Yeah. The Zealot DT run by does not really accomplish too much more than sniping off the missile turret, or sorry, the uh, the bunker. The missile turret does detect those DTs and Liberator cleans up. Really, really tough game here for both these players. Again, it's going to come down to those big army fights who can manage them a little Ooh, bit better. Big EMPs. And Hero Marine has done a fantastic job of pulling this game back into his favor. Mm -hmm. Very nice snipe there by Hearthstone. Yeah, sniping off another one of those Liberators. Keeping that Liberator count low is pretty important. Three more Colossus being produced at a time, so this is going to be just really heavily investing more and more into those Colossus. The Viking count, it's actually not looking crazy healthy anymore. It's only down to seven. I think he's just sniped off another one of those. But these Liberators are really causing problems. They really are, and he's going to continue to leap forward, so it's going to force an engagement out of Harstam, who has been avoiding these engagements for a oh. long time. Very nice storm, however, but the Colossus unfortunately spawns onto the oh. army of Hero Marine. 
the EMP on almost every single one of the High Templars. No yeah. more storms are going to be saving Harsim for a little bit. But this, this army is just getting massacred. Harsim loses nearly everything. Yeah. And Hero Marine pulls the game back 2-1. to one. Yeah, I mean, he took some risks there economically, uh, dropping that fourth base. I liked Harsim's strategy choice. I liked his transition into heavier tech. Mm -hmm. I liked a lot of what he had to say, but then the attack, it just didn't pan out in his favor. He just didn't yeah. go for it. The War Prism, that was very nice by by, uh, by uh, Big Gabe. If that War Prism ends up in the main, if the turrets, and the turret left it with like no HP, and then the Viking sniped it with one last shot. Yeah. All right, if, if that doesn't happen, then I think we have Harstam coming ahead out of that attack that he was planning, but instead he's forced to retreat, and Big Gabe gets, uh, gets the economy the economy working himself so yeah absolutely back, very well done i do feel like we saw a lot of uh, the the at least mild adaptations there from hero marine just to say like harsim is going so ham with these zealot run bias from that game number one and even trying a little bit of that with the game number two with the war prism and stuff so just getting all those missile turrets set up always having those bunkers and the missile turrets set up yeah. inside the mineral line he was very ready for all of the run by attempts and everything harsim got not a whole lot done uh, with yeah, almost any anything. of them. So yeah, I think that's a uh, that's to the credit of, of Hero Marine indeed. He did a great job adapting to the playstyle of Harstam essentially to his strengths. Yeah. So he that's gonna put him up two to one. And you know, if you're Harstam, you've picked the three right build so far, and it hasn't gone well twice. So yeah, a little bit, a little, little bit. bit among us, yeah. Yeah, he's been able to get those earlier mid-game leads. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, before we jump into the next game, I want to remind you that, of course, we have been watching and seeing all of these games played with a bunch of these fantastic War Chest skins like this one, the good old Marine skin. What do you think of this Marine skin, Paulo? I really like it. I'm not sure if it's ready to uh, rave or laser tag, but I love it. <laughs> did you play a lot of laser tag? Yeah, I did. Growing up as a kid? Growing up as a kid, indeed, I was yeah, I was pretty good at it. When did you stop playing laser tag? Uh, when the kid parties stopped being hosted at the laser tag place. You, so you didn't host you didn't host them yourself? Nah, no, I yeah. just went to them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my mom couldn't rent an entire laser tag place. You didn't have to rent the entire place, right? It's just everyone. I guess pays you're it. right. Ah, uh, no, 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 so no. Birthday my, parties. No, but for my birthday parties and yeah. stuff, there would just be a bunch of randos there, and we just team up on them. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, like birthday parties in Peru, you kind of have to invite everyone in your class. Ooh. My class is like 40 people, uh -huh. like per, per classroom. Oh my God. Um, yeah, so yeah. it's 200, it was 200 that's per class and, and 40 per classroom. It was a big classroom. Yeah, that's, just rotate around. that's tough, man. If you have to invite everyone. What if you don't get along with some of the people in your class? Then it's weird, you know, <laughs> then you're, yeah, then you're shunned and then, you know, so it'd be like 29 people or the guy or you don't you know, have to invite got, everyone you know but 39 you, but you people got invited that one guy everyone finds yeah. out yeah yeah so it's yeah it's it's kind of oh man that's awkward it's kind of awkward yeah that's tough i uh yeah i, I don't think that's that's how most of the birthday parties i knew happened in the yeah United peru States. is peru is uh it's a special place as far as like people interaction people are very warm and friendly and yeah. it reminds me of like indian weddings because for those who don't know in india mm -hmm. like over here you always hear and like you see in the movies and stuff it's like oh someone cancels last second on the wedding or someone shows up with a plus one right and the bride gets really upset mm -hmm. that's what it's like over here in india it's like the weddings are just open to the public <laughs> cool. so you can just walk in They'll, you can just go in eat a bunch of food walk really? out yeah it's totally normal that's crazy yeah that sounds like a nightmare to me. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like a lot of spending for whoever's hosting it. That's why I'm not getting married in India, man. Yeah, don't do it. Uh, all right, so we're moving into game number four. Here we're currently sitting up two and one. Remember, this is a best of five, and it's not just making the round of four that's on the line. It is the fact that uh, the top four finishers for WCS Challenger Season 3 get flown out to WCS Fall, that's uh, over in Montreal. They get their flight paid for, they get their hotel, they get seated into Group Stage 3. There is a big, big benefit for being able to win this best of five right here versus uh, coming so close and then dropping out. Yes, indeed. We'll see if Hero Marine is able to do it and close it out over here, or if Harstem will fight back. 
Very quick Robo here from Harstam. I want to note that I think that Robo was maybe when the Adept was only at like 25% done. So the Reaper is going to have no problem coming in here and scouting because guess what? There's no units out just yet for Harstam. So yeah, maybe this time Harstam anticipating again not a Reaper scout, maybe another tank push or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of funny too because Harstam did hide that probe in the bottom left hand side again, but this time Reaper didn't really spend a whole lot of time scouting around for proxy locations and stuff. Just went straight beeline over to Harstam's base. Yeah, and, uh, and the road oh, was nice placed in the, in the most obvious spot as well, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, the spot that the Reaper would see right away. Yeah. So um, a little bit rough, though. Hero Marine is still going for the mind drop regardless, and Harstam is producing observers, so it seems like <laughs> still Harstam will have kind of the upper edge as far as builders are concerned, right? In spite of the scout from Hero Marine, he's committing to his bread and butter, yeah. maybe what he's practiced on this map. I, okay, so the Reaper's gonna pop back in over here. He doesn't dive any further in. But I do wonder if maybe just seeing the, the the really fast Robo, there are those one gate Robo, very quick Robo Bay. You were talking about Disruptor drops and stuff or really fast Colossus plays. I wonder if Hero Marine has that on his mind as a potential option. But it really does seem like a, a little bit of a just slower, gradual move forward to a, probably eventually a robotic space. But for now, it's just about the fast observers. So, Yeah, and that lines up perfectly as well with the timing of the robo that you mentioned earlier, right? Like if you're going to be pumping a lot of observers, those are not very expensive units. So you can probably afford it even even if you drop the faster robo. And, uh, and he kind of wants this coverage for the Widow Mines in particular. So we'll see if he's able to spot it. Uh, the Reaper pops up to the high ground, sees that third base. So here Marine's going to have a pretty good idea to say, okay, I know that there's not some funky two base all in. I know I'm not going to deal with that three gate warp prism stalker pressure that you put on, on uh, Cyber Forest. Or no, not Cyber Forest. It was another map, right? Um, sure. Game number game number th uh, two or three. Mm -hmm. But either way, here Marine's going to be in the know at least this time. And Observer is going to get scanned and picked off. Yeah, almost Barely. misses a stutter step there, Hero Marine, for a second. And this guy was looking for, I guess, a war prism, the mine, right? Or, or I, I don't think there could be an oracle coming up, right? There's, yeah. It's, it's a, there was a really quick robo, so maybe he did have some sort of drop or pressure in mind. Yeah. Well, the widow mine does actually go off, so the observer definitely spots should have spotted it out. Mm -hmm. uh, Harsum should feel pretty good about leaving an observer somewhere back at home just to help deal with those widow mines later on. But, of course, he's got that Twilight Council finish up. He's adding on charge. He's adding on his gateways. He's getting up his double forge upgrades. So no Robo Bay on the way. He is all about just pumping out upgrades and getting up a strong base army. Yeah, I'm surprised that he's mining with two on each gas whilst mining, uh, distant mining the third for as long as he did. Because, you know, that, like, yes, there's a little bit of a drop off from two to three on gas, but there's a huge drop off from, you know, mining your minerals next to a nexus to mining your minerals to back, back, back to a different nexus. So. Yeah, yeah, the long distance mining is very, very uh, in intense in terms of the drop off there. Uh, looks like a, a pretty quick tw uh, Temple Archives there. This is a little bit faster than I'm used to seeing if we're going to go for like the, the really quick double forge upgrades and really powering out a big gateway army. Now, that does scare me a little bit because Hero Marine is starting to build up a pretty scary looking army. After the next set of Metavex comes out, or maybe even just around now, he may feel comfortable moving out with one, one finishing up in combat shields and putting on some pressure. And that's going to be before things like Storm are going to be done. Yeah, that's certainly going to be difficult for Harstam to deal with, but it looks like the Medivac is going to fly over the Observer of Harstam, so he should be ready with units in position. And this War Prism in a beautiful position as well to no, the potentially the or the Knight. Oh, I'm surprised. There's The Reaper is still alive. Well, not for much longer, but... Okay, Harstam sees how late that third CC oh, is, and that should set off some alarm bells. You should definitely know, okay, I need to just power out units right now. I need to get ready for the defense. Yeah, this Viking looking for the war prison. It might think that it's covered. Oh, this is great for Harstam. Uh, yeah, that's over in uh, Hero Marine's side of the map, but the Widowmine drop comes into the natural, and we're going to see that these probes... Good split over there. Not oh. bad at all. Five workers go down at the same time. It looks like Harzim is able to snipe off two workers of his own with that Warp Prism. The Warp Prism also taking some damage, but he's pushing Hero Marine further and further back. The Warp Prism gets sniped off after he tries to recall back home. He doesn't get the recall off. He loses the Warp Prism. 
but he is defending really, really well. Yeah, action everywhere. That was four fronts, basically, in the span, <laughs> over the span of like five seconds that were... Shout out to Awesome Sauce for keeping up with it. <laughs> yes, indeed. So, uh, yeah, this is pretty crazy. Uh, I think that Harston pulls a little bit ahead from all that as he defends, you know, most fronts, whereas Hero Marine just defends the War Prism <laughs> with no further investment. I like the idea that an entire army loads up, and I just imagine like one naked guy like a streaking past the army, and the army just double takes and is like, "Wait a second, what was that?" And then you just go chasing off after him. Yeah. That was a, that. That was that zealot. He was the streaker that just pulled all <laughs> of the all of the bodyguards and the entire army force away. All right, four more gateways being added on. Finally, it seems like Carson feels like, you know what, I defended pretty well. I took out a good chunk of the army. I think I have time to get up Storm, so there it's going to be going. Also, the Knight that Thirsty C that's now flying onto the onto the third. And um, I'm surprised Hero Marine didn't actually morph the CC before flying it. That's a little bit inefficient as far as I'm concerned. Oh, yeah. You know, that is a really common thing I've found, and that, that always bugs me. And the reason why I think that uh, Katz is saying that is because if you morph it beforehand, you're building up energy, and you'll get more of those mules, right? Versus if you land it and then morph in the orbital, there was all that time, it was just a command center, and you never had the energy building. Yeah, but I see I see now the reason Big Gabe was doing it is because he already has saturation for his third, so ah. the, the loss of minerals would have actually been greater if he morphed it as opposed to mining fully if well, you landed there early now early. I want now I want to see the map on when is when with how many SEVs is it worth it mm. to immediately land the command center versus morphing into an orbital first. yeah it wouldn't be an exact science of course because there's yeah. value to be gained from scanners potentially That's supply drops which no one's use no one uses but yeah but yeah you could get a, an approximation as far as just like on the mule front uh, okay, so the War Prism did barely manage to survive. It was sitting very low on hit points, and Storm just finished up. So Harstum is looking like he wants to start putting some pressure on, poking forward. Hero Marine is looking for these free pickoffs over here, though. I like, the, I like the addition of these sentries. We haven't really seen a lot of the sentries from Harstum in these games, but those Guardian Shields, I mean, it's effectively just adding a plus two armor upgrade for all of your units here against the Terran. Yes, indeed. Harstem is actually very good at force fields. Mm -hmm. Not just that, you know, I don't mean just like spacing them properly or positioning, but he is very good at placing them in, in locations and then taking advantage of them more so than uh, I think most Protoss players I've seen. So I am also kind of puzzled as of the we, uh, why, why we haven't seen more of those. Yeah, it might just be partially also a control thing, where if you're controlling the High Templars and also the sentries... Yeah, it's a gas, and, yeah. gas thing too. It's yeah. Mm -hmm. But still. But, but still, yeah. Well, EMP is not really coming off right now. Oh, nice feedback. Yeah. Getting some of those ghosts pushed back. The Zealots getting tiny bits of SCV harassment done. Ooh, Storm's zoning out a lot of this army. Yeah, that war person was playing with fire with a fully low, with fully uh, energy high temper, I suppose. Mm -hmm. There is no more. E oh, there's a couple of EMPs now popping in. Harsum really having a hard time pushing up that ramp, though. So I think he's going to have to reconsider and maybe poke up the natural and just kind of move back and forth. He's trying to defend that Archon that's morphing in. It's almost finished. It does, does get sniped off before it can finish, though. And here, Marine looks like he's feeling confident. He's got a lot of army over here. He's gotten off a ton of these EMPs on these High Templars now and the Archon. Oh, never mind. He's just not looking at the screen at the moment as he runs back. And Hero Marine, oh. so smart, actually ignoring the Templar and going for the units that, that he that he may not get otherwise. And then, you know, he knows he's going to get the Templar at the end. Yeah. So very cool from him. Gets the energy units of both the High Templars and also the Sentry. And now we end up seeing that multiple EMPs thrown off on those High Templars. Bro. Even the Observers revealed, by the way, from the EMPs. So if you're wondering why that's not uh, cloaked right now, we're starting to see the Hero Marine. He is starting to snowball. The Zealots may be what he needs to turn this around. The EMP actually hits the Zealots and not the Ghosts. That's actually really, really well-placed EMPs there from Hero Marine. And that might just be exactly what he needs to start turning this into a big old W. Yeah, this wall could be it. Has the fourth of Harstam has been taken out at this point, or, at, or will be anyway. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure what he can do from here. I mean, Hero Marine is situating his fourth at the same time. Upgrades have been fantastic for Gabe throughout the entire series. Mm -hmm. uh, just keeping up with the Protoss very well. Uh, up about 50 supply. Harsim is warping in a desperation round of these Zealots. 
and they're gonna try and go into the meat grinder here. But Hero Marine, Big Gabe, looks like he's probably gonna be coming out on top of this series, three to one. As there is the GG, Hero Marine is your first semifinalist. Yeah, I think what most people would expect. Um, second semifinal, sorry. Second, yeah. indeed. Um, but yeah, well played by both players. I really like what Hearthstone brought to the table. I think that the bread and butter of Hero Marine now is that new Ghost upgrade and the EMP. Mm -hmm. He did so much work throughout the entire series with that, so be on the lookout for it. He looked very strong with that Ghost EMP upgrade. And, I mean, you can even see just visually, you can see how much bigger the radius kind of feels mm. with how quickly he was able to get a lot of those EMPs off and how many of those High Templars or Zealots he was able to hit with them. So Yeah, and even just the threat, it's not like how effective he was at EMPing even. It's the fact that Harstam was having to preemptively use a lot of his Storm, sending High Templars in front, because the EMP now probably outranges the Storm by yeah. a fair bit, right? If you do it on the edge of the radius. So he was kind of zoning out with Storms. And I have to wonder, once that upgrade comes in, should Protoss players even continue to go Storm at this point? It's, it sounds or like a Or do you start mixing in the say. disruptors like you were saying before? Perhaps, I don't or, know. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's, it's very difficult to propose that you, sh that you should replace yeah, yeah. High Templars by something else. Um, Just increase your APM by 50. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's tough. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, that still does mean Hero Marine moves on. And we're going to, of course, get to see more Protoss players playing out their PVTs later on. But for now, we're going to be moving into some good old fashioned Terran versus Zerg. Our next match is Rainer versus Soul. Following it up, a Protoss versus Protoss. We'll see you guys in a little bit with more WCS.